About a month ago, I made this video for the Summer of Math Exposition, which if you didn't know is a contest for math videos held by 3Blue1Brown. In it, I talked about the extension and retraction of piston extenders as a sequence of piston firings, and I tried to find the shortest sequences possible. Now, even though the video did really well, and I'm insanely proud of it, it was kinda rushed, because I started it only a few weeks before the deadline. Yeah, not the smartest move. So today, I thought it'd be nice to make a follow-up video about all the interesting math I didn't talk about. Let's get started. Starting with extension, the original video proposed a formula that looks like this. If n is less than 13, simply do n to 1. Otherwise, start with 12 to 1, then 24 to 1, etc., and end it with n to 1 if it doesn't already end like that. So when n is 8, the sequence is just 8 to 1. When n is 40, the sequence is 12 to 1, 24 to 1, 36 to 1, 40 to 1. And when n is 24, the sequence is 12 to 1, 24 to 1. And note that I'm not worried about parallelization yet, we'll get to that later in the video. Right now, each piston is just fired individually, one by one. Now, I'm proud of this formula, especially because I came up with it myself, and it does work. But when it comes to generating the shortest sequence possible, well, it definitely doesn't. As many of you pointed out in the comments, a simple counterexample is when n equals 13. My formula produces 12 to 1, 13 to 1, but a better way to do it would be 1 and then 13 to 1. More generally, the consensus from the comments is that you should backload the extensions instead of frontload them. What I mean by that is instead of always starting with 12 to 1, start with a number such that repeatedly adding 12 to it will automatically land on n. That way you don't have to awkwardly add an n to 1 at the end of the sequence. For example, take n equals 40. My formula gave 12 to 1, 24 to 1, 36 to 1, 40 to 1, which is a total of 112 extensions. But the better way to do it is to start with 4, because then you can do 4 to 1, 16 to 1, 28 to 1, 40 to 1, which is a total of 88 extensions. Notice that by starting with 4 and adding 12 repeatedly, you automatically land on 40. And in total, we saved 24 extensions. As it turns out, this magic starting number can be calculated by doing n mod 12. 40 mod 12 is 4. Therefore, the formula for the better approach looks like this. Start with n mod 12 to 1, then 12 plus n mod 12 to 1, 24 plus n mod 12 to 1, etc., and stop at n to 1. There is one weird thing about this formula though. When n is a multiple of 12, n mod 12 is 0, so it tells us to start with 0 to 1. But there's no such thing. We don't have a piston number 0. So if you want to be really precise, you can split this into two cases, one where n mod 12 is 0 and one where it isn't. But anyways, this new formula is pretty great, and it's actually where the counterexample for a 13 piston extender actually comes from. When n is 13, n mod 12 is 1. So the formula produces 1 to 1 followed by 13 to 1, which just simplifies to 1, 13 to 1. So yeah, this new formula almost always results in less extensions. The only time it doesn't is when n is already a multiple of 12. In that case, the original formula and the new one produce the same sequence. But is this new formula optimal? In other words, does it produce the shortest sequence possible for all n? Well, after reading the comments, I noticed that a few of you went ahead and proved that yes, it is optimal. So I'm going to show you what I think is the most elegant proof. This proof will consist of two main steps. First, we'll create a lower bound, which is just a number of extensions that you provably cannot go lower than. And then we'll show that this new formula always produces a sequence whose length is equal to this lower bound. If we do those two things, then we've proved that this formula is optimal, because you can't go lower than a lower bound. So first, the lower bound. For this part, I have to give full credit to Casper, who left a genius comment on the last video. Fun fact, Casper is an IMO gold medalist, which is so cool. I didn't expect someone like that to comment on a Minecraft video of mine, but I'm really happy about it. Casper's idea is to create a lower bound based on the movement of the air blocks instead of the pistons. Notice that every extension moves exactly one air block. For example, if you have an air block right here and you extend this piston, the air block moved to here. This is because the air at the front is destroyed and a new one is created in the back. Now with this in mind, how many extensions does it take to move an air block by a distance of k blocks? 
Well, what if you want to move it a distance of 7? You can do that with just one extension. Or what about a distance of 12? You can also do that with just one extension. But what about 13? Well, you can't do this with just one extension because of the push limit. You're going to need at least two extensions. You can do 12 and 1, or 10 and 3, but no matter how you split it up, it's going to take at least two extensions to move an air block by 13 blocks. Furthermore, the minimum number of extensions to move an air block by k blocks is the ceiling of k over 12. When k is 7, we get the ceiling of 7 twelfths, which is 1. When k is 12, we get the ceiling of 12 twelfths, which is also 1. But when k is 13, we get the ceiling of 13 twelfths, which gets bumped up to 2. As you can see, the ceiling of k over 12 perfectly describes what we want. Now we can create a lower bound. Notice that after the extension sequence is done, the first air block moved a distance of one block, the second one moved two blocks, the third one moved three blocks, etc. And since we know that each of these air blocks is going to take at least ceiling of distance over 12 extensions, we can just sum them up. A lower bound of an n piston extender is the sum from 1 to n of the ceiling of n over 12. Okay, let's do some examples with this. When n is 3, the lower bound produces 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. Because you need at least one extension to move the first air block, second air block, and third air block. So in total, you need at least three extensions to extend a three piston extender. When n is 14, the lower bound produces the sum of 12 ones and two twos, which is 16. Because you need at least one extension to move the first 12 air blocks, and at least two extensions to move the 13th and 14th air blocks. So in total, you need at least 16 extensions to extend a 14 piston extender. All right, now that we have a lower bound, let's show that the new formula is always equal to it. Remember that the new formula produces n mod 12 to 1, 12 plus n mod 12 to 1, all the way to n to 1. So the actual length of this is just n mod 12 plus 12 plus n mod 12, etc. plus n. As a quick sanity check, let's see if the formula matches the lower bound when n equals 40. The lower bound produces 12 1s, 12 2s, 12 3s, and 4 4s. And the formula produces 4 plus 16 plus 28 plus 40. These both equal 88, so that's great news. But of course, we want to prove this for all n, not just n equals 40. And I'll be honest, I tried to prove this for a few days, and I didn't really get anywhere. I managed to change the right side into a summation as well, but that's kind of as far as I got. So I offered it up to the people in my Discord to give it a try. And within literally 10 minutes, Frogman and Spoon both came up with a nice proof for this equality. Here is Frogman's, and here is Spoon's. You can look at them in more detail in the description. Amazing work, guys. And that concludes the proof. We created a lower bound by looking at the movement of the air blocks and proved that the sequence length from this formula is always equal to the lower bound. Therefore, this formula always produces an optimal extension sequence. So what about parallelization? In the original video, I parallelized my formula by taking these subsequences and arranging them like this, with each one starting one column after the previous one. With this new formula, nothing really changes. The best way to parallelize it is still the exact same. And what's kind of funny is that after parallelization, my original formula and the new formula produce the same length sequence, which means that in practice, they're the exact same speed. For example, when n equals 13, both the original and the new one have a length of 14. Or when n equals 40, they both have a length of 43. This is because the two formulas always produce the same last subsequence, and they also have the same number of subsequences. When n equals 16, for example, both formulas end in 16 to 1 and have two subsequences. So they're both going to have a length of 17. Okay, now for retraction. The nice thing is, in the original video, I already proved that this formula for retraction is indeed optimal. But I want to point out a couple more interesting things while we're here. First, notice that you can create a lower bound for retraction using the same air block strategy. Each retraction only moves one air block at a time, and the total distance traveled by all the air blocks is the same. The difference is that instead of moving air blocks up to 12 blocks at a time, each retraction moves an air block by exactly one block, no matter what. 
So the minimum number of retractions to move an air block by a distance k is ceiling of k over 1 instead of ceiling of k over 12. Furthermore, the lower bound for retraction is just the sum from 1 to n of ceiling n over 1. This gives us a really nice symmetry between the lower bounds. The one for extension has the push limit on the denominator, and the one for retraction has the so-called pull limit on the denominator. And by the way, the ceiling of n over 1 is just n. Another thing to mention is that the sequences from the retraction formula can also work in reverse. For example, when n equals 3, the formula produces 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. But you can also do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. This is just another way of thinking about retraction. The normal sequence finishes the pistons from right to left, while the reverse sequence finishes them from left to right. And this reverse sequence can be represented with another recursive formula as well. Finally, let's briefly talk about the parallelization of retraction. Technically, I covered this in the original video, but it was kind of glossed over. To parallelize retraction, we can use the same strategy as extension. Place each subsequence one column after the previous one. For example, when n equals 10, the parallelized sequence looks like this. Or when n equals 7, it looks like this. This allows retraction to be ridiculously fast. I'm really glad the original video prompted so many interesting comments and discussions. I saw some of you guys coding sequences yourself, or being inspired by the video to work on other things, which is just so cool. But I think that's about it for me. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. Peace out guys.